Hi, it's Max from Isolation Game and today we're covering cameras and text from Dreams Workshop. Let's dive in. Howdy, partner! Cuthbert's always wanted to be a star, so I've cast him and Connie in a drama set in the wild west of the Dreamiverse. But this scene needs a director, and I thought you would be the perfect person for the job. We're gonna use cameras and text gadgets to tell the story of how Deputy Carney apprehended Cuthbert the Candy Thief. But you won't get far without a camera, so I'll better show you where to get one. Open the assembly menu with the square button, then select gadgets. Close any open sub-menus with circle, then open the cameras and lighting section. Find the camera. The icon is an old-fashioned movie camera. Select it with X. This camera is going to capture our opening shot. See how the gadget has a little camera gizmo attached to it? Point it roughly at Connie, then stamp one with R2 or X. Once you've stamped one, unequip the gadget by pressing circle. Before we look at the framing, there's a few things we can tweak on the camera that'll help us achieve a cinematic look. Hover your imp over the camera, then open its tweak menu with L1 and square. The transition type settings let you change how cameras activate. By choosing different curves and adjusting the transition time slider, you can blend cameras together. But for a dramatic scene like this one, we'll be using the cut transition. It's the button with the scissors icon. The cut transition is instant, so there's no need to set a time for the transition. Below the transitions is the field of view slider. The wider the field of view, the more you'll be able to see with the camera. You can leave it set to its default value for now, but you might want to make adjustments later. Finally, we're going to turn on black bars. It's the button at the bottom. This will put a letterbox on the camera to give it a widescreen look. Move on to the next step and we'll look at framing the camera. I love wild angles, the wide angles, <laughs> and also a low angle on the character that moves inside the shot. But uh, isn't it the opposite of the real camera? Because, yeah, it is. So, uh, in real life, mm, it's totally opposite. Uh, the wider Oh no, it's in millimeters and this is in uh, and this is in radians? No no uh what's the name of the points I don't remember. So if you, uh I'm used to different uh scaling numbers. Like 16 millimeters for me is uh, um, the uh, wide uh, wide angle, and here it's different. Uh, like 80, how to say that? Uh, I have to check. Let Let's wait for a second. D 
degrees yeah degrees I forgot the word yeah so it's actually totally opposite to what I used to have even in 3d software right. let's frame the shot properly cameras only activate in play mode and test mode but we can preview and edit the framing with a simple shortcut hover over the camera gadget then hold L1 and press X it's just like scoping in we're now looking through the lens of the camera but not just looking we can also edit the camera's position just by using the normal movement controls if your camera is a little wonky it's no problem it'll automatically level itself out if you move it with the left or right sticks isn't that clever position the camera with Connie and Cuthbert at either side of the frame for their confrontation here's another tip for editing cameras you can use the up and down directional buttons to change the field of view and you can still use the tweak menu while editing the camera so you can see the effect of the changes you make once your shot is perfectly framed use the shortcut L1 and circle to exit the camera we've set the scene now it's time for the drama to play out oh my god move on to the next step when the you're ready to start telling below. the story the camera is below the ground <laughs> so but I still love the fr ah, yeah I understand now we'll have to be a little bit more like this yeah it's not as dramatic as I wanted to it to be but still I love it um, maybe a little bit lower no no it's already be below the ground So this is how I mm. I would love to see this kind of animation here but let's leave it this way the simplest way to show text on screen is to use a text displayer open the assembly menu and go to gadgets in the movers and outputs section you'll find a handful of gadgets for displaying text and numbers the icon for the text displayer is two speech bubbles on a screen select it with X and stamp one in the scene then unequip the gadget a text displayer is pretty useless without text so let's add some open the text displayer tweak menu with L1 and square on the first page of the tweak menu is a box to enter text this is going to be Connie's opening line of the scene Connie has come to Cuthbert's hut to confront him about the stolen candy so make the line challenging and dramatic I'll give you a moment to think about Connie's line once you've got something you can move on to the next step I forgot how it, 
how to spell candies. Can uh, dies like die. You filthy thief. We now have a dramatic opening line, but it doesn't look very good yet. Text always displays middle left on the screen, but while the tweak menu is open, we can grab and move it with R2. By default, the text is pinned to the screen, no matter where the gadget is. You can resize the text with the up and down directional buttons. Move it to the right side of the screen so it's on the same side as Connie on camera. Now let's tweak how the text looks. The first page of the tweak menu has options for changing the appearance of the text. Let's see if there's a more appropriate font. Scroll through the list using the up and down directional buttons. On page two of the tweak menu, you can change how the box looks. Find the option for tail shape. Adding a tail will turn the box into a speech bubble. There's a few different tails to choose from. How about zigzag to make it look like Connie's shouting? A positional gizmo appears with the tail so you can change the length and direction of it. That looks about right. There's plenty more options for customizing the text displayer. Take a look through the rest of the menu and try them out. Cool. On the text box properties page, you can make the box more rounded or change its color. The border properties page lets you change the look of the border or get rid of it completely. You can add a fleck texture to the text box using the option on the texture properties page. When you like how your text looks, close the tweak menu, then give it a test in play mode. Oh, something's not right here. Ah, my camera's too close to Connie. So when she's possessed, the view switches to the camera built into her controller sensor. I don't want to change the position of the camera, so it needs to be put on a timeline. When you're ready to continue, return to edit mode, rewind time with L3, and start the next step. Mm. This is actually pretty mm, bad if you can't control text while you are in, inside the camera. Because right now I don't see any option for that. But I, I wish that it will be addressed soon in the video because now I have to position text uh, while I'm not seeing the actual frame and that's pretty stupid to have. Okay, I guess I'm almost done. Almost still want to move the mm. K 
can I mm, edit the position more? Text curviness, text box opacity, maybe a little bit of opacity will work. Yeah, but I need it to be positioned to the left. Is there an option for that? Mm. I don't see such an option. Padding. Nope. Not that out of fit. Hmm. It's not very good if you can't move the... Mm. I forgot how is it called. Is it called... Tail. If you can't move the tail, it's, it's pretty bad. Anyway, let's continue. We have an establishing camera and a dramatic opening line. Now we need to incorporate them into the rest of the scene. On Cuthbert's shed, you'll see there's a timeline surface snapped above the door. The timeline is called Confrontation Cutscene. It contains some more cameras and text displayers. Take a look at the timeline canvas. You can open it with L1 and X. Ah, there's a nice little space here for your camera and text displayer to go. Grab your camera in the scene with R2 and drag it over onto the timeline. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why do I still see the text? while I don't want to. Oh, finally. Okay. Don't worry about messing up the shot. The camera gadget will snap to the timeline, but leave the gizmo in position. Now place Connie's text underneath the camera, so they're active at the same time. Well, 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 let's... to the timeline and drag it over onto the t ah there's a nice little ah there's a nice little space here for your camera and text displayer to go grab your camera in the scene with r2 and drag it over onto the timeline don't worry about messing up the shot the camera gadget will snap to the timeline but leave the gizmo in position mm-hmm now place Connie's text underneath the camera, so they're active at the same time. The time our camera and text displayer are visible is determined by their length on the timeline. So, if you want any text to display for longer, just scale it with the up directional button so that it fills more of the timeline. Or you can lengthen or shorten the clip by grabbing the trim handle on the end of the gadget with R2. The cameras and text displayers will stay in place in the scene, even if you move the timeline. We can't test the timeline just yet though, because it's powered off. To turn it on, just open its tweak menu with L1 and square. Select the power button at the bottom of the menu to activate it. Should we take a look in play mode?
Wow, what a cliffhanger. The performances were superb, but I think the cameras on the timeline could do with the director's touch. Return to edit mode, rewind time, and start the next step when you want to continue. Okay, director's touch, here it is. That was a great opening, but I think we can improve some of the cameras. Make sure you have the timeline open. We don't need to be able to see it, but the cameras will be hidden if it's closed. Fly over to Cuthbert and find the camera behind him. Open its tweak menu with L1 and square and move it to one side. We don't need to tweak anything just yet, but having it open will mean we can use it at the same time as editing the camera. Now scope into the camera with L1 and X to start editing it. When this camera is active, it's focused on Cuthbert, even though he's got his back to it. I think it would be better if Connie was in focus, and to do that, we need to adjust the focus distance and aperture. Try changing the aperture slider by grabbing it with X. The higher the aperture, the more blurry Connie becomes. But if you increase the focus distance, she'll come back into focus. At high aperture, only the parts of the scene that are near the camera's focus distance are sharp. With a low aperture, even objects in the far distance will be in focus. This effect is called depth of field. It's a nifty technique for drawing the eye of the viewer. We don't want to lose too much detail in the foreground though, so about 30% should be enough. Techniques like this can really help tell a story by directing the viewer's eye to the important parts of the scene. For some extra dramatic punch, you could create a keyframe animation to pull focus so it switches from Cuthbert to Connie. Take a look at how keyframes have been used on the timeline to create the dramatic zoom in on Connie with the third camera. You can learn about keyframe animations in the Keyframes and Timelines tutorial. Look for it in the Animation section of the Dreams Workshop. Move on to the next step when you're ready to get deeper with dialogue. Well, that's a challenge. Let's make a keyframe. and put it here in the beginning of this frame and uh, we need to go back to the camera view or just turn it manually Oh, I see the line. Great. Like this. And... Uh, okay, stop recording. Now we will need... Um, another keyframe. And we'll put it right here. Uh, and with this keyframe, oh, it's too far from Connie. Let's put it right here. Yeah, stop recording. Now we just need to make now we just need to make um, 
a smooth transition. Yeah, I like this one. Okay, let's check. It needs to be much faster. Oh, no, 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 no. It needs to be like this. And also, I guess I don't need any smoothing. Just making this guy bigger that's pretty much okay let's check What is this um, last frame? There is a last frame. Oh, it's already open. We need to fix the last frame. And this one. like this i believe it's it's there but um let me check mm. no it's not that how to see the keyframe this keyframe yeah I selected it can I mm, move the slider here will this work will I see the actual keyframe no, no, no not like this not like this yeah it's fine it works uh, so mm, maybe we still need some more time here because this doesn't look really good and I want it to look really good and maybe some curvature we need here let's check I think my text is better than theirs yeah, now we have that good focus, focus transition, but I don't like the framing of the shot. Uh, it doesn't cut very good. 
Okay, but let's continue and see what she has to say. Text display is a great for adding captions and titles, but for more complicated conversations, we need a more powerful gadget. Go to the assembly menu and navigate back to the move as an output section of the gadgets menu. In the menu, find the dialog text displayer. The icon is two connected speech bubbles. Select it with X, then stamp on into the scene. Unequip it from your imp, then open the dialogue text displayer's tweak menu. The dialogue text displayer is used to create branching conversations with multiple choice answers. The first page has exactly the same options as the regular old text displayer. To continue the story, give Cuthbert a menacing one-liner to challenge Connie's resolve. The dialogue text displayer has all the same customization options as the regular text displayer. So take some time to edit the appearance of the text. Just as with the standard text displayer, dialogue text is pinned to the screen by default and can be grabbed, moved and resized by the imp. If you want to use my script for the scene, you can find this dialogue gadget in the tutorial collection. When you've finished writing Cuthbert's dialogue, start the next step and we'll do Connie's replies. Before we enter Connie's replies, there's a few other options I want to show you. Go to the settings page of the tweak menu. Select the button with the elephant icon. This will turn the dialogue into a big gadget. This means the text will be visible on the gadget tile. Now select the next tab, the one with the crossed circle icon. On this page, you can add an option to skip or close the dialogue. The circle button is the default for closing the dialogue text. You can show the prompt on screen by selecting the button with the open eye icon. Close prompts are useful if you don't want a multiple choice response, like at the end of a dialogue sequence. We want to give Connie some options though, so head to the dialogue properties page. Select the tab with the speech bubbles icon. Here, we can create some dialogue options for Connie's comebacks. The different responses can be selected using the controller buttons shown on the left. If you use the same button for dialogue as you did for a close prompt, the dialogue will take priority. To keep things simple, we'll give Connie two dialogue options to choose from. Use the text boxes next to the X and circle button icons to give Connie two different responses to Cuthbert's challenge. Use the video controls to pause if you need time to write your dialogue. Connie's lines will appear underneath Cuthbert's. Grab them with your imp to arrange them and resize them. When you've got the dialogue how you want it,
select it. Close the tweak menu with L1 and circle, then start the next step. The dialog gadget now has some extra output ports for the two button options. Using these ports, we can turn our piece of dialogue into a branching conversation. But first, we'll need some more dialogue. On Cuthbert's shed, you'll find a microchip gadget. Open it up with L1 and X and take a look to see what's going on in there. Here's the rest of the script ready to go. The conversation has two branches. In one, Connie tries to arrest Cuthbert. In the other, she questions him about the stolen candy. Depending on the player's choices, they'll end up at one of these four endings. On the left of the microchip, I've left a little space for you to place your dialogue text displayer. This will be the start of Connie and Cuthbert's confrontation. Grab your dialogue gadget with R2 and place it on the microchip. It'll automatically snap to the canvas. To progress the conversation, we need to connect the circle and X outputs to the rest of the dialogue. Create a wire from the circle output port of the dialogue gadget that you created. Extend that wire over to one of the next two dialogue gadgets and connect it to the start text input. Now create a wire from the X output port and connect it to the other dialogue gadget. Branching dialogue logic can get messy, so using microchips is essential if you want to keep a semblance of order to your scene. We now have a complete dialogue tree. In the next step, I'll show you how to connect a camera to the dialogue. There's one more thing we need to connect to our dialogue, a camera. You'll find a spare one on the microchip, but you can edit it or add your own if you want to. Tweak the first dialog text displayer and go to the inputs and outputs page. Find the button with a waveform icon. This port is active whenever the text is on screen, which makes it perfect for triggering a camera. Create a wire from the text active output using R2 or X. Extend the wire over to the camera and connect it to the power port. The dialogue is ready to go. We just need to connect it up to the timeline so that it'll activate once the cutscene has finished. The confrontation cutscene has a wire connecting it to a counter gadget. This bit of logic takes the pulse signal from the timeline and turns it into a constant signal to power the microchip. You can learn more about this in the wiring and logic tutorial. To activate the microchip, create a wire from the counter full output on the counter and connect it to the power port of the microchip. Then switch over to play mode and test the dialogue. Well, 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 I missed something. That started off to play mode and test the dialogue. To play mode and test the tur and connect it to the power port of the microchip. Then switch over to play mode and test the dialogue. That started off well, but it never reached a satisfying conclusion. 
So often the way, isn't it? In the next step, I'll show you how you can end the scene with a bang. This showdown between Connie and Cuthbert needs a big finish. On the right side of the microchip are two gadgets. One called win and one called lose. You can tell from this icon in the corner that they're both microchips. These microchips contain two cutscenes, one where Connie defeats Cuthbert and one where he sends her packing. Connie and Cuthbert's conversation has four possible conclusions. One will activate the win ending, the other three will lead to the lose ending. Let's start with the win condition. Pick one of the dialogue conclusions. I'm using the one at the bottom. On the right edge of the gadget, you'll see a port with a square stop symbol icon. The port will send a signal when the dialogue text is finished. As there are no dialogue responses set up in these gadgets, they're finished using a close prompt instead. We'll use this port to activate the microchip. Create a wire on the text finished port, then extend it over to the win microchip. Connect the wire to the microchip's power port. Now do the same with the other three dialogue conclusions. Except this time, connect them to the power of the lose ending. The stage is now set. The actors are ready. All that's left to do is play the scene and watch the drama unfold. Rewind the scene with L3, then switch over to play mode and see if you and Connie can get the better of Cuthbert. Well, what I want to say is that uh, I don't see why they had to change the representation of camera angle into degrees. Uh, that will mess some heads up uh, because in every actual big 3D software or in any uh, industry they use the millimeters uh, describing the camera angles and uh, for some reason uh, Dreams uses degrees uh, and uh, that's a bad thing I, uh, in my opinion and also uh, what I didn't like is that uh, you don't have options of previewing uh, all the elements uh, that you need to like text uh, inside cameras uh, because uh, that would help uh, uh, assembling uh, shots that you need uh, for every scene uh, much easier and selecting everything and then watching the camera it's some um, 
bumpy ride in my opinion but anyway thanks for watching and be a dreamer <laughs>